that. That's that's you guys though. That's not us. That's you guys. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm gonna get into it. So we're gonna go over the list really quick. One one thing to note, cool. just real quick. I'm I'm still struggling with Vassal. Uh, it's trying to do some funky stuff. So uh, ignore what's on screen right now um, and give us a minute or two while Kevin's going through the list. All right, so we'll start with the bad guys. Paul is running Vader after a slimming. He had a little bit of a point reduction, and he's rocking and just after burners, no force talent at all, which also got a point reduction. Uh, he's running Major Vermeil, who can, uh, if there's no token green token on the target he's shooting at, can rotate one of his uh, attack dice to a hit, and Death Troopers, which will force stress to stay on at range one. Uh, Pierce Sabak, naked, uh, which is just if he doesn't have a damage card, or if he has one or less damage cards, he rolls an extra attack dice. And Wampa, who just rolls an extra attack dice when you don't shoot at him. On the good guy side, Morgan is running a very familiar list, but with some slight modifications. Uh, he's running Poe with heroic R4 integrated S foils and black one. Just the blue squadron rookie, who might I add after the last show, we've decided to call the blue squadron expert. Because he deserves a promotion. Oh, so much. He Morgan did so <laughs> much work with him the last time. He did. Uh, Blair would be proud. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. <laughs> the ever famous Lulu, but with a different loadout. I wasn't sure if like the list was entered in incorrectly um, or not. But heroic and crack shot. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that means no trick shot. And my eyebrows did go up. Hmm. Uh, and tally. With just crack shot, um, Morgan is bidding five points, so he's at one ninety five, and Paul is at a straight two hundred because he is a gentleman, and he doesn't play that game. So those are the two lists. Um, I feel like I don't have to go over Poe or the A wings abilities because we see them all the time. Yeah, they're. I think as far as the resistance goes, um, they are definitely the go to ships. Mm hmm. Um, I will say I'm a little surprised to see no trick shot. Like I can get, I totally understand crack shot on tally. Cause I even use it or used it, but I'm not mm. sure yet what I'm going to do with her, but I'm just surprised to not see trick shot at all. Cause Lulu doesn't usually want bullseye. Like he, he kind of doesn't care where his arc is. So it's interesting that he's now more forward thinking from his arcs perspective. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm interested to see how this works. Um, are we about ready or do we want um just about i'm waiting for okay. it to load in vassal all right that's fine uh does the chat have any questions while we're finishing the loading sequence i see we've got a good number of people in here already and if luke is here mr carrington um you should chime up because i need to have a chat with you about painting before adepticon I'm not seeing anything, so um, we will move forward with that as soon as it's ready. Yep, it's... Um, so one of the things I can talk about really quick, uh, some experimenting I've been doing after the point changes with some of my lists. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk in some of the podcasts about Lando and Han and Rebels having a lot of options. Mm. Um, I definitely agree with the crate cast when they talked about everyone's kind of moving towards Han, but I think Lando is the one that's going to be the one that either breaks the game or pushes the combos and is going to be the most interesting to play with. Well, he has that, but the, he's got built in coordinate. So yeah, that's at range three. Yeah. Turns out that's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I'm really impressed with the, the Falcon and I will be putting corn horn on the table sometime soon. Hmm, interesting. Uh, he may or may not be making an appearance to Adepticon well, this year. Well, now now that um, they've lowered the points on <clears throat> him specifically, I think uh, I think it's a really good option for extended for the rebels. Well, and they didn't just lower the points on Corin; they lowered the points on the pieces of Corin. They lowered the points yep. on Corin. They lowered the points on R two D two. They lowered the points on FCS. They increased the points on proton torpedoes, but overall, it's a net net cut, so it's good. It looks right. like we're just getting set up. Um, Jake's going to go ahead and speed it up to when the 
placement is all done and we're about to start and setting dials for the first time. Yep. Now we, we don't have to guess about any of that. It it did um it did look before. Hopefully the uh, update that I did quick will get rid of it. But previously, some of the dials, the names on the dials were only showing up, but the the dial itself wasn't. Um, so if that does still happen, uh, you can send your feedback to Muon, right? He's the one that does the vassal. <laughs> yes, Muon manages the vassal module. Uh, so feedback at back to dials. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I wonder if they finally just like deleted that and it's no longer an email address because I know for a long time that <laughs> has been the running joke is any anytime you can put an email address on something, put feedback at backtodials.com. I wonder if he, Asa just likes it so that he thinks that people realize he's still there. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it is unfortunate because I got to say, when I first got into X-Wing, uh, Back to Dials, I think, had just started to take off as a podcast, and I really enjoyed their shows. I liked Tyson. And then when Tyson left, I kind of left too. Like, I just stopped listening. It, but, it, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. They had a cool, like, little professional style of it. I just really enjoyed a lot of this stuff Tyson had to say. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting, and that's why I used to listen. Okay. Um, but we are, are, at, are we about ready? Uh, we are fully set up here. So Okay. All right. So I we are good to, good to go here. Um, yep. So I just want to point out again that Paul is moving first in the six matchup, which will be interesting to see how Morgan handles that. Um, and if he can use that to his advantage, which I'm sure he probably will. Um, but it'll just be interesting to see how Paul handles moving first with a, with an I six. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I would like to point out one thing. Um, if you notice the chat, uh, we have uh, for the third month in a row, uh, local, Carlo has subscribed uh, with Twitch Prime. Thank you, Carlo. We appreciate it and definitely appreciate you sticking with, with us for the last three months. That's awesome. All right. So we see a split formation with one of the A-wings and the other kind of clustered up towards the bottom. And then with Paul, it's everybody together. So um, it'll be interesting to see if if Paul approaches the A-Wing and takes like the bait or if he lets it flank. Um, interesting, because he's flanking with Tally, not Lulu, so it's it's more or less okay to let that happen. Okay. All right. Um, what do we got going I think on? we're good to go. So you're just getting to dial spots. Um, Chad yeah. had mentioned that they're active... Um, I don't know if Tyson's back or not. I haven't listened, um, but I do know I had talked to Carson who now moved from Minnesota back to Colorado where he's originally from. And he had mentioned that Tyson's in like a different city or something, I think since his job change. Oh, okay. So uh, that's about all I know. So it looks like we're still going to have the issue with the dials not showing up. Cool. Yeah. But we'll see what moves they execute, so yeah, yeah. we'll figure it out. Right. It just means that I won't be able to, as I'm cycling through the logs, I won't have um, a advanced warning for when ships are going to okay. be moving and be able to stop. So. That's all right. Yep. All right. All right. So looks like we'll go ahead then and have Paul start moving Wampa. Yep. Uh, and he does what? Uh, three right bank there. Yep, looks like a three right bank heading into the rocks. Finding a lane. So, yep, little barrel roll to make sure he's in the lane and he doesn't have to adjust and he can just go forward if he wants. Yep. And then. It's Morgan with a slow roll on the X Wing. Yep, with the blue squadron ace, right? <laughs> yep. So aileron and then out. So it looks like Sabak is probably going to cover the outside flank to scare Tally away. Makes sense. Yeah, that that flank is uh, pretty well protected there with uh, Vader and Sabak and that uh, Reaper there. I'll be interested to see how far away Oops. Vader goes from Vermeil. Like, does he keep Vader near him? 
I'm interested to see what he does with that. And there you go. Just okay. Keep, keeping him nice and tight. So I think Paul is probably bringing him along the top because there is more room to work. Even if he decides to go through those rocks, it's a much bigger space through that top little section than it is through the middle and the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that middle is very tightly packed. And yep. while the medium base is easier to navigate through, um, just if, if you can stay away as long as possible and not have to deal with it, it just makes it easier. Yep. All right, so Lulu is coming on the outside. Yep, five forward there. Are we going to see a barrel roll and a boost or just a boost? Um, just a boost. Looks like okay. just boost. And dial open. Sure. Yep. Two forward out of tally. And a roll. Yep, to keep away. So she has retreat options. And Vader and does Vader. a three bank. Okay, so Vader stays kind of on the outside. So chat just mentioned that uh, Tyson is back on. So I might actually have to listen now because nice. I enjoy Tyson. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think they had a good dynamic. That's why I liked him when they I first did. started. I just yeah, I just really liked Tyson's perspective mainly because he was also a rebel player. Ah, sure. <laughs> the good, the good guys. I got a one bank out of Poe there. And was it barrel roll boost? Yep, looks like barrel roll boost. So Poe is probably on like a two forward next turn, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so do we see... I mean, Vermal can't slow down unless he coordinates. Um. But I think Vermal is just going to like charge through those little rocks where he thinks Tally's probably going. Yeah, probably... You you probably what ailerons one forward and then maybe what they got a one bank on on the dial. They do have a one bank. Yeah. Or does he? Yeah, because it's kind of a situation of all right, Morgan, are you gonna run with that a wing like I think you are, or are you gonna like do a three hard the opposite direction, and do you just one forward with the reaper after the ailerons to make him be honest? Yeah, but is that is that a an okay spot for the following turn? I guess is what I would. No, it's a bad spot for the following turn, right. which means I think Paul probably will move the Reaper under and have Sabak go over, if I had to guess, just because the maneuverability capabilities mm, sure. is much better for the, the striker. Um, And Wampa, I'm, I am curious what he's going to do with Wampa. Just because, like, you don't want <laughs> Wampa there, but you can't really hide him. You, like, you kind of want to make, be like, hey, he's not here until he actually gets to shoot. Yeah. Um. And Vader. I'm curious to see, too, how far Vader moves from Vermile. Do they stay near each other, or does he let Vader go off on his own, especially since he moves mm -hmm. before Poe? be interesting to see. Yeah. I mean, haven't we watched Paul before, and he was using a... Wasn't it a U-Wing? And he just never he really... U -wings. He didn't coordinate all that much. Yep, he didn't. So, so I wonder how much we're actually going to see him coordinate out of the Reaper. Yeah, but don't forget, he did have supernatural on luke on that list okay so he had whereas he doesn't have that on vader sure. that's why i was like hmm, is he gonna try to like just use coordinate as a way to slow down the reaper and use supernatural yeah makes sense all right looks like some of the dials are coming down yep all right looks like it says uh, they're both set there so okay so wampa will move first yep. uh two forward Heading through the channel. Okay. Oh, okay. Barrel's back. That gives him so, an interesting position. He can kind of next turn bank either direction if he wants. Yeah. And, yep. and be on it, it one side of the... It keeps him back further, and it lets him bank either way. Yep. yep. Uh, three forward out of the blue squadron. Okay. So I wonder... Yeah, I was well, going to say, I wonder yeah. if he's trying to get there before Pierre Sabak shows up or not. Yeah, and Sabak did. I mean, he he did the, was it a bank uh, with, yeah, a, one bank with his ailerons and then two bank. So then that tells us, based on where he's at, that the Reaper's probably going to come into that huge hole and do a coordinate action. Mm -hmm. So that Sabak has an action as well. Yep. So there's a one, the one forward uh, aileron. 
and three bank. We'll see if uh, Morgan actually did do the three forward or something like that or to the top of the board to oh, get the flank. Yep. Yeah. Um, and Paul did just focus with uh, Vinder there, or Vermeil, sorry. Okay. Hmm, okay. Two forward with Lulo. Staying back, making Vader come forward if he wants that <laughs> target lock. They're, uh, they're talking in the chat log, and Morgan says, hmm, I feel it could be an Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> you know i gotta say that's probably one of the things i i miss a little bit is they they banter in the chat log and it, it'd be funny to you know if there was a i don't know if there's you know discord or voice or anything with that but that would be fun to to really hear these guys going back and forth Nope. so interestingly enough morgan did do the move to the top he did a slower move which which is fine um, but I wondered if he would, if mm. he would faint the retreat and instead go the other way and, and kind of try to pull a juke and get someone behind. Uh, yep. And, and then, to be honest, Tally's not a primary target by any means. No, but definitely it could be, you know, a thorn in uh, Vermeil's side if he's... Yeah, just pecking away every turn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, that is one nice thing with the second edition now is the two dice don't feel as bad as they used to in first edition. So it's, it's still yep. a threat. Um, and then so, he, he did lock and then boost as well with okay. tally. All right. So he's going to definitely be trailing. All right. Now Vader goes two forward. Okay, and then he's going to barrel roll forward. Or just barrel roll. Yep, he's just repositioning it there so he can fit. And then I assume take... Does he take a lot? Yeah, it's... Oh. Who is he just out of range? I think he might be. I think the, okay. because he had to go all the way back on that barrel roll, yep. it, it pushed him just out of range, which is, is very interesting. I like the... Um, because of the new barrel roll mechanic, he couldn't just, you know, squeeze in there. Yep, where he would need to be. And now Sawampa is going to have a no mods attack made on him. Yep. Hmm. So he locks the rock. So Poe and like what, two forward? Yeah, two forward. Yep. Okay. They roll out. Okay, so Poe's trying to just maintain the outside contain. Yep. Tally, no shot. Yeah, Lulu, range three. Yep. So it'll be three on five with a focus. <laughs> Looks like Morgan's dice are still good. I'm uh, slightly above average, but yeah. Yeah, well, hey, I mean, that's... <laughs> His dice are usually much above average. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Wampa takes a damage. Ooh, ouch. And loses his extra ability to roll third dice. Yep. And Sabak will have a shot, I think. Oh, the Reaper. Yes, that's right. They're both four. Yep. So, so range three, not obstructed, I don't think. Yeah. Mm, two no hits, mods, though. though. So only two. Yep. <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah, that's the Morgan dice I've been waiting right. Yep. Whoa, 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 Wampa, I'm angry. modified too. So against three because of the ability. Yep, but so Morgan nice. rolls yep. all paint, so he's safe. Because that's how math works. Yep. At least uh, the math for Morgan's dice, right? So... 
does Morgan try to go really fast and try to get behind Vader with Tally or with Lulu? I think so, right? Since he can't supernatural or go slow. Well, I think you could get a, a five forward off, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, what you know, you were uh, just out of range three, right? So, so yep. we know that for so a fact. You're at range like, so you're like seven and three quarters bases away. Yep. And a five forward will put you six bases, so it'd be one and a half bases, which is not enough to complete a one forward. And if Wampa tries to block you, he kind of blocks Vader. So it's unlikely that he would do like a one hard and sit there to block you and let Vader do a one forward. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think Lulo, you just charge forward. I uh, think so. You take the focus, rotate your arc backwards. I wonder if Poe goes really fast as well and tries to get around the outside. Or, because I mean, if you just bank Poe in, he's probably going to get shot at by at least two targets because the striker's probably coming in for Poe. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, their, their, their target is not <laughs> the, the, the blue no no at all but does morgan then do you use the blue to block sabak options i right. think so yeah i think that's a good call from the blue you know probably a maybe a two bank that that puts the blue in a decent spot to just block up that center area in between right, those four rocks Yep, because you don't want to stop the ailerons. You want to stop the after movement. Exactly, yeah. Okay. You know, unless... Yeah, I'd be interested to see what Vader does, though. Maybe even like Paul's... a two bank and then barrel roll with the blue? Barrel roll away? Or would that put you potentially put you at in danger of Sabak being able to take a range one with five dice? So I don't think I would barrel roll just because of the T7 usability. Like you, if he's yeah. going to have a shot, you at least want to threaten three dice. Sure. Um, and you probably want to go at least a two bank because that Reaper is going to be doing mm -hmm. a one and then a two probably, and, and he'll be coming in real fast. Right. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure. Be interested to see what what he does with that blue. But I mean, I think you can guess that Sabak is coming in fast, trying to catch Poe from the side in the back. And Vermile's probably going to do the same thing, just trying to come around the outside. Mm -hmm. So I think it's all about probably going four forward with Poe and then figuring it out. Yeah. I mean, you've, to see what if, if you really needed it, you know, you set the set the fast move. Maybe even maybe even a three, just because it gives you some more options with uh, the title. Sure. You know, in case you really need to get out of the way then at least the you know the four doesn't give you any options right like you you have no options for black one right because i think what wampa is going to probably two bank right in front of that rock two or three bank and point towards the bottom of the board mm -hmm. i mean morgan could do like a two hard up and based on how fast vader goes he has options to respond because paul can't keep going straight forever because of that rock. Yep. So maybe a two hard up isn't a bad idea either. Kind of gives you that same thing. Like you could two hard up and then you have potentially a barrel roll away or you can, you know. Well, you just... know what he could do is if he two hards up, he could just try to identify Sabak as the first target mm. and try to just smash him. Sure. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they do. All right, I'm cycling so... through... There we go. We've got dials now. All right. So we'll see Wampa move first. <laughs> In the chat log, Paul says Reapers are hard. Um, yeah, their dials aren't the best. No, but it's interesting with the aileron move, all of the different places you can end up. You know, it's it's the advanced sensors boost and you can change so much with that just setting a straight move or something and banking away or sure okay so wampa oh, does commit in. into the rocks okay well he knows he'll probably have a shot no matter what if he goes here since the blue can't really escape okay 
And especially if Morgan's using the blue to block Sabak. Yep. And Paul shoots first, so Wampa will get his ability if nobody shoots at him. Oh, he three turned with uh, blue. Okay. So I think he's protecting Sabak if he tries to go slow from just, you know, smashing the T-70. Mm -hmm. And when I say T-70, I mean the blue. Yep. So he did manage to clip clip him on the aileron's move. And then he just does the one forward. Yep. Okay. Ooh, Paul said there's a big decision with the Reaper. <laughs> boost right or boost forward. He's doing a bank, then it means. Yeah. So he's wondering if he's going to clear the rock, I think. Yeah. So he elects to do the one bank. To the right, yep. F yep, to the right with ailerons. Oh, and then he bumps. N uh, does he? No. Wait, he doesn't? No, he cleared. Oh, it must just be the zoom angle. Okay. <laughs> he, he in the chat log, he's actually saying the same thing. He's like, "Wait, I didn't hit anything." <laughs> <laughs> it's like a four forty like last time. Yep. Uh, you want to say? Right. Wow. Hey, Kevin, hold on. Your um, your audio is lagging. Uh, give us a minute, Kevin. I'll probably have to reset his mic. All right, is that better? Much better, yes. Hmm, strange. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't yeah, think Paul was pl planning on uh, having to decide an action with that Reaper because he figured he was going to hit something. So uh, he jams the focus off of the blue squadron. Interesting. So he's just loading it up for Wampa to smash him. Okay. And Jam is white on a Reaper, right? Um, I'll look. I uh, yeah, I'd I'd have to look. Uh, because when when Jam went from range one to two to just range one, I kind of wrote it off on the Reaper. Yep, it's white. Coordinates red, but it's white. Okay, okay. cool. Okay, so we're going to see the A-Wings. What was his move with the A-Wings? Five forward. Five forward? Yep. Yeah, I knew it. Yep, and then a the barrel then roll. Barrel roll, rotate backwards? Yeah. Yep. Smash Wampa. Take away the ability. Or turn in with Tally because you have to. Yep. yep. And focus boost. Focus boost. Sure. Did, uh, did Tally have trick shot? I can't remember. No, nobody has trick shot. They oh. both have crack shot. Okay. Be a good spot to have both crack shot and trick shot, huh? Uh, it would be. <laughs> so Vader jumps over the top. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. Interesting that Paul turned both Wampa and Vader in towards those rocks instead of trying to put the squeeze on Poe. I wonder if it's because he knows if he goes for Poe, Poe can just get out of it and then he doesn't get to shoot. Whereas he knows he's going to know where the X-Wing is. Yeah. Like the X-Wing can't escape you. So we got a barrel roll and a target lock on the blue squadron from Vader. Interesting on the barrel roll. Um, just because Vader's dial is... I don't know if you can fit it too hard next turn. I haven't played enough fast to know. Mm, like, you could fit a one forward for sure. Yep. But I don't know if you could fit a one or a two hard. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan opened the S foils on Poe. Just. Okay. And then turning and two in. Two hard in. Yep. Okay. 
Now, does he take the second action with Poe, or does he just do nope. the focus? Nope, he just did the focus. Okay. Hmm. So Vader will shoot first. Yep. Looks like not obstructed. Hmm. Probably not. We'll see if they check. Nope, he's saying yeah. not obstructed. Okay. So he rolls two hits. And... Does he spend the lock? Um. So he uses the chassis ability to change it before yep. doing anything else. Makes sense. Yep. And... and he spends the lock. Yep, but he re-rolled into a blank. Okay. <laughs> Just snatties. <laughs> Easy. I mean, all right. It, it is the Blue Squadron ace, right? That's that's what we're expert, expert, expert. Uh, Blue Squadron expert. I mean, so yeah, he's yep. just not gonna not gonna take damage. Easy. <laughs> uh, Poe's got lots of options there. I think Poe only has one option, right? It's Sabak, or I guess you could shoot at Wampa and try to take the token away so that. You get a range one from, yeah, Paul, Morgan. So many choices. I'm going to guess you'd probably just shoot at Wampa, right? Just to try to take the token off and let Lulu shoot range one with yep. no tokens against him. Yeah. Um, question or a statement from chat uh, about Jam. Um, is Jam in, in arc only or? No, it's range one now. Just it range was changed. one. Yep. It was changed just to range one. Okay. So that's why... Um, the Reaper was able to jam the focus off the blue squadron. Who apparently didn't need it. Yeah, yeah, it does not need it. Okay, so range three. I'm so glad those lines went away. Yep, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, looks like he's going for Wampa. Yeah, okay, makes sense. And rolls two hits. Oh. Spends the focus because yep. he has to. Yep. <laughs> And now he'll get his focus fire. Yep. So here comes four dice, range one. Yep. Oof. Three hits. Probably taking at least a damage. Yep. So I don't remember. Did Wampa, Wampa took one damage before, so he's at one yeah. health right now. Yep. Wampa is now down to one health I just health updated left. the overlay. So you got a range two at that Reaper or a three at Sabak. Uh, he's going for for Mile. Makes sense. Oh, rolls hit crit. So yep, uses the target lock. Yep. Yep. Two evades. Does he spend crack shot? I don't. Is think it worth? So? Is it worth it there? Like maybe if I there's only so. one evade, you you crack shot the other one, but. Because they have shields, so you're not going to get a crit in. Right. They still have two shields. Yeah. I think you save it. I think I'm you do, too. It'd be interesting to see what he does. Oh, he's, oh he so says he, might as well. Yeah. Okay. So he does one damage to Vermeil. Hmm, that's interesting. I mean, it is a damage. It's... Yeah, and if this was a situation... So this is kind of the context of this, of this decision, right? So... It's harder to get bullseye against ships that move after you. Yep. And he has a couple ships that actually move before tally, so it might be easier to get throughout the course of the game. Mm -hmm. But if you were in a situation where maybe those ships moved after you instead, then I would absolutely use crack shot. Right. And this one I would maybe save it just because it's you know, you'll probably get opportunities to use it again. But yeah, we'll see. It, it may not matter. Yeah. And Looks like uh, Sabak's got that range three on Poe there. Just barely range three. Oof, jeez. Three hits, but he's going to get three dice himself. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this is awkward, as Morgan says. Spend it, take one. Yep. Okay. So Vermile's going to be range three through a rock, and Tally will be able to trigger her ability. So Pole will have 
five dice? <laughs> An X Wing with five dice. That's crazy. On on defense. <laughs> yeah, for defense. <laughs> yeah, three V five. Yeah. <laughs> And no mods either way, right. so two hits. I mean, but when you're rolling five dice on defense, like, do you need mods at that point? I mean, you do. I've had a lot of A-wing rolls where you roll, like, one paint and you roll four blanks. That's and you true. Go, what? Ooh. Yeah, kind of like that. Kind of like that. Jeez. Takes another damage. Oh, two damage. Ow. Yeah, Vermile's ability let him convert since Poe didn't have any tokens. Yep. Ouch. So range three against Tally. Oh no! Sorry. No, no, that was the. <laughs> uh. I don't think uh, Morgan would want to take that shot. Yeah, so Poe's in a really weird spot here. He would really wish he had BB-8 this turn. Yeah, <laughs> I would agree. All right, so let's see what we can do here from just like a thinking perspective. Can you fit a 4K? I don't think you can. Would you hit that rock if you try to do a 4K with the blue? One, two, uh, three, four. Maybe you could clear that rock, but you'd be in Tally's way. Mm -hmm. mm. Because Tally stressed, presumably. Yeah, she is. No, no, I'm, I'm saying I'm thinking like, can does a three bank... Does it clear that rock and put you in an okay enough? I don't think so. No. I think you'd clip that rock. Probably. I mean, Tally could turn away and do it, you know, do a two bank away and then rotate arc with a focus. Yeah. But I mean, um, Tally could also two hard and and then, you know, something in boost. You focus boost do you or. Use the blue to block Vader's slow moves. Like, do you try to, like, two bank boost? I don't know if that's too far. Hmm. And block his, like, his one bank or one forward to the left? Because, like I said, I just, I guess I don't know if Vader can fit it too hard down. Because if he can, that that's probably the ideal move for yeah. Vader. I just can't tell from this perspective. And then Lulu probably just does two forward and... Focuses or target locks, I guess. I mean, um, he'll get a sh he'll I, get a shot no matter what. Yeah, I guess if if you wanted to though, with Lulo, you could too hard. Oh, focus and then boost. It, yeah. Uh, well, no, because you you it, then you're gonna be, um. You're not going to have a shot, right? Because he's got Lulo's well, arc pointed backwards. Yeah, so, yeah. If you two-hearted top, and then you focused and boosted left, oh, so now your angle, okay. your arc would be pointing like this. You'd have a wide open net. I was more. That's thinking, what I was thinking. Okay, I was more thinking uh, boost the other way to get, you know, so then you could like you could um, boost rotate, and then you've got Lulo stressed and behind Vader, so rolling three dice. Mm-hmm. So hmm. the Reaper could choose to like, man, the Reaper could choose to block a lot of Poe's moves. Yeah. With his, with his huge base. Hmm. I'll be interested to see what they decide to do here. This isn't a spot I would like to have Poe in. Okay, so we're just skimming through the log. Yep, and they're chatting, so there's extra. Yeah, extra they were stuff worried that do. there was like a disconnect or something on their end. Yep. All right, so. There we go. All right, so this is this is the big turn, right? This uh, is probably the turn that could win the game right here. Uh, yeah, definitely, because you do have Poe in a, a really tough spot. You've got most of uh, Paul's ships potentially able to converge on on him or even one other and the 
the rough spot too is you can't even like four forward to try to get out of this because that a big base i'm really worried about what that reaper mm -hmm. he could sit just sit there and take up space so uh carlo in chat uh brings up a point about pope potentially going three left doing a, a hard that's turn that's probably left. what will happen carlo i think so because then you can black one out of there yeah yeah that's more than likely what will happen unless what is the let me check what the sloops are on the striker because the striker could do a one bank left with ailerons and then if he can sloop far enough he could try to block the three hard away and then poe is just screwed are they one sloops or two sloops i want to say they're two sloops the Reaper, I think, has a one sloop just because it's slow. Okay. But let me yeah. verify that. Car Carlo said two sloop. I believe that. Yeah, and the Reaper has a one sloop. So yep. he could, let's see, is a one boot? Yeah. If Paul does a one aileron left and then I think a two sloop, he could probably block Poe's hard three. Hmm. And, and again, I'm just speculating. Yep. Okay, so we've got Wampa on the move. Does he do a three bank? Yeah. Three bank, yeah. Oh, come on, blue, do the two bank. <laughs> I have no bias here. No, no, not at all. <laughs> nope. Yeah, even Paul said in the chat log that this is going to be an exciting turn. Yeah, it is. This is probably the turn for the game. Yep. It's a, it's a good thing this turn right here is, is uh, being watched by 29 other people, so... 31 it looks like 31 okay that's what i'm seeing nice thank you everybody for tuning in uh it's awesome to have that many uh, people the one bank no. no morgan you needed a two bank <laughs> no uh but i think you're right there kevin if he would have two banked and then boosted uh that would have put him in a good spot to block any forward movement from vader Yep, you got to put put that big daddy down and yeah. stop him. And, and believe mean. me, it pains me to tell you that you were right. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting used to it at this point. Uh, but I will just point out again, Morgan, it would be really nice to have BB-8 right here. <laughs> <laughs> so we see a one bank from the uh, striker with Paul. Oh, man, the two sloop doesn't quite block yeah. it. Dang nope. it. It was hard to tell, but I do like Paul doing this. Oh, yeah. It's a good time to turn Sabak around. Yeah, he's safe. He's not going to get shot at by anybody. Yeah. So then the Reaper, does the Reaper just occupy all that space? Oh, yep. And he slooped as well. Interesting. Okay. So and not, that's okay. Uh, yeah, it, it's okay for the Reaper. It's not okay if... Um, if Morgan is, did a three yeah. hard because then he's going to be sitting right in front of Sabak. Uh, yeah. So this was a really good play by Paul. So just to talk about this quick. So Paul, knowing that Sabak is just the bigger threat in general mm -hmm. because he's going to roll more dice, moves Sabak into a position where he is safe, which is a primary thing with Sabak. But B, he used Vermile to be the blocker where Sabak could have been. So now if Poe does get blocked, it's going to be five dice at range one, which is obviously the better call mm -hmm. i just wasn't for sure if vermile was just gonna like sit kind of in between that rock and poe and just yeah. occupy all that space um but I, I think this was a really good good play by paul knowing morgan is a safe player he would probably take the three hard away to be safe mm -hmm. um what that does possibly open up though is like a a three forward or three even three or four forward. four forward right and then be able to um get out of arcs does that mean paul's gonna try to fit a one bank with vader down or maybe he's confident he can fit the two hard i guess if if he thinks that the one bank fits and then he can barrel roll vader into that lane yeah mm -hmm. all right so next we get to see the a wings yep Uh, took a damage shield. yep so tally does a two turn to the right but we expected so yeah i was gonna say so then you use tally to block yeah okay
There's the two hard from Lulo. So I think we're going to see a focus and then a boost to the left so that he's got a nice arc positioning. Yep. Yeah. Really good. Oh, and okay, that's so he hard. could fit the two yep, hard. It fits. All right. Oh man, Poe's gonna be super oh. dead if he uh, <laughs> deals that three hard. Yeah, yeah, this is not good. Definitely, and Paul says definitely target lock Poe. <laughs> yeah, seems um, seems like the correct choice there. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the barrel is fine. Spend the extra force to get the barrel. Sure. Now see what what I know that Morgan is gonna do is that he's gonna three forward with Poe. And then he's going to black one a three bank. And Poe's just not going to take any shots this turn. Well, there's also one thing he could have done, too. He could do the three bank where Vermal was because knowing no one else could occupy that space. Yep. He could say, I'll just three bank, and then I'm going to use black one again and three bank away. And right. then he's probably out of range of all shots. Yep. But he would have he would have had to call Paul doing this. Uh, sure. Uh-oh. Uh, oh. oh, he three oh. hearts the other way. Wait, I think he went the wrong uh -oh. way. No. No? No. He that was intentional? He rolled a dice. Huh. That was intentional. Okay. Do you think he was close enough? I mean, is that like just Vassal messing with your spatial awareness there? I'm not sure. Well, I'm surprised if you're going to do that, that you don't just commit and do the three bank instead. Because, because you know the three bank probably fits. Well, yeah, yeah, three bank doesn't hit the rock. Huh, I'm just, I'm surprised. Okay. I mean, not I, what I expected. No. I mean, what that gives Vader what is that going to be range two? It'll be range two, but it's a fully modded range two, and it's going to be Sabak obstructed. Yep. But Poe's got Ugh. no tokens and only four health left. Yeah. Uh, this. <laughs> this could be. Could could swing it right here. Uh, sorry, the they were just re um, talking in, in the chat log and <laughs> going back and forth and Paul saying that it was a really ballsy move and Morgan saying, I figured I'd surprise you with it. Yeah, so Morgan was even saying he was thinking there's no way Paul was going to give him the three bank, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll see if heroic matters. Oh, Paul, uh, Paul only rolls one hit there. So then you change it to a crit and then spend the target lock for sure. Yep. Yeah, and then spend the force. Yep. So Poe is at minimum taking a crit. Yep. So Poe takes a hit and a crit. You can tell me what the crit is, Jake. Yep, I will. Uh, the crit was fuel leak. So... <laughs> Don't take another crit. Right. <laughs> All right. There's a chance. I mean, Sabak has no modifiers. Mm-hmm. But with Oof. only two health left, uh, I don't think Poe is long for this world. <laughs> so Lulu only has one shot on Vader. Yep. Uh, seems good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And is Vader out of force right now, or is he at one? Um, let's see. Cause he he barreled as his action. Force charge he took to a one. Lock, he, he has barreled. one. Yep, he has one force charge. Okay. And he might spend it there. I think he will. Nope. Oh yes, he does. Sorry, I was. Yes, okay. I, I read this. Yeah. So Vader is now out of force. Yeah, here's the range two obstructed from Sabak onto Poe. Two hits and two evades. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's Morgan. All right. Morgan's dice, right? Yep. All right, so that's all shots the, then. Yep. Um, I don't think. That that puts, I mean, Poe is still going to have trouble next turn. Be oh, yeah. Because you've got Sabak and the Reaper and Vader being able to follow up. 
Yeah. I would expect Poe to turn right, given the state of the striker and the reaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then at, at least uh, a right turn gives you that rock to keep them from just fully charging in. Yep. Okay, so you send Lulu around to hopefully kill Wampa. Man, that blue is just unfortunately just hasn't been able to do much this game. Tally's mm -hmm. going to turn down. Hmm. Probably just go slow with the blue, huh? Just a, like a one forward because... Yeah, because you don't want a talon roll because it's that rock. Or I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you just talon roll. No, you'll be on the rock, so never mind. Or well, you maybe yeah right in front of it. It's it's hard because he's at a little bit of an angle. Yeah, I mean, I think he would talon roll and he'd be uh in front of the rock and you just eat it, I guess, the next turn. But that seems kind of like a waste. Yeah. Um, chat's talking about what Poe could potentially do. So yeah, pose options. Um, so let's see. Vermal is going to need to clear stress. And the Reapers blues are the one banks and the one through three forwards. So Vermal's mm -hmm. probably going to one bank. And let's see. What is the striker? Blues. So we, we've got a little bit of insight uh, from Paul here. He was uh, in the chat now saying that... Um, he figured that Poe was going to do a three left bank and then slam three left bank and then Interesting. boost. Interesting. So I'm, I'm just curious then, Paul, why would you think that Poe wouldn't turn down given that the striker and the reaper are both stressed facing kind of an awkward position if if Morgan went towards the bottom of the board? Because like as a Poe player, I'm sitting here thinking, well, my first reaction is to do like a two or three hard down and then maybe do slam to like talon roll or something i wonder if he was talking about this previous turn if oh instead not, oh, yeah, not yeah. this current turn but the previous turn okay yeah that makes sense yeah that makes sense and and paul put his ships in to block the three hard or the three bank uh yep. from that previous turn so mm -hmm. that makes sense oh no he's saying this turn now that's what oh okay i mean i could see some players do it too um, I guess my perspective, though, is just I would I would try to go down and use the rock for cover and or turn around just because you can maybe avoid shots. Mm -hmm. But it, you have to guess. I mean, I could be wrong. Yep. And so did Wampa just one hard? Yep, yeah, Wampa one yep. hearted. Does Wampa barrel roll or just stay there? Stay there. Okay. Stays there and focuses. Puts pressure on Lulu. Mm -hmm. Three turn from Turns the blue. Okay. Uh, one bank from Sabak. Yep. Sabak's probably going to barrel roll. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> In their chat log, Morgan said that the which way Poe goes game. <laughs> One forward clear stress. Ah, yes. Death Troopers. Yep. The card you don't see very often triggered. So, um, Death Troopers makes it so at range... Is it range one? Or is it two to three? Let me check. Um... You basically it's, don't remove stress. Yeah, and it's uh, it's range one. Okay, so when the A-Wing would normally clear its stress at range one, Death Troopers triggers and it retains its stress so he can't take yep. any actions. Yeah. Which uh, is a good good move by Paul. Yep, Car Carlo in the chat clarified that, and he does use Death Troopers uh, locally, so... I bet he does. Yes, he does. I've played it a few times. <laughs> it's got a hard two out of Lulo... And a roll back. And a, probably a boost forward to get to range one. Uh, no, he rolled oh, oh, and rotated so that way he can actually shoot. 
Yep, makes sense. Okay, so Vader commits to the left move. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now we get to see what All right, Morgan, does he do. What do you do this time? Um, Poe closes his S foils. Does a three forward. Huh. Slam right. And then take the weapon disabled token. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> you should ion. Uh huh. <laughs> of course. Uh, then we get a boost as well. Huh. Definitely take the ion token then, right? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, now Poe's just going to clinch. Yep. I mean, but it is a range three unmodded shot from Sabak. It is, but he also doesn't have any mods on defense. He's got heroic. That's a good enough defense. Oh. <laughs> that card saved me three shields this weekend or in one game. I was, I was so annoyed. So we've got range two with Lulo on the Wampa. One hit. Oh. Yep. Probably evaded. <laughs> nope. What? <laughs> nope. Okay. Wampa <Lupa> dies. <laughs> uh, Morgan says, so we're going to trade Wampa for Poe? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think Paul would take that. <laughs> uh, yeah, chat. Um, Kevin is not a fan at all of heroic in fact so hold on hold, hold on I, I, i'm not a fan of heroic when it's argued against trick shot when they were both at one point now that trick shot is two points i will still take understand people using heroic <laughs> on poe specifically yeah but yeah like i took trick shot off poe because it went up and i put heroic on it i'm not gonna talk about it <laughs> anyway all right, so we've got a uh, range three shot from Tally to Sabak. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, he's shooting at the Reaper because okay. he doesn't have a shot on Sabak. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's playing focus, so he rolls average. The Reaper gets one evade no matter what. Yep. Yep, makes sense. Range. Vermile range three. three. And his his ability won't be active because there's a focus token on the yep. defender. Uh it doesn't get any hits anyway. Mm-hmm. Alright. So Alright, the shot that matters. Yep. Ooh, two crits. Oh, this Ugh. is Ugh. Well, hold on. So hold on, hold on before you go any further. Oh. If he doesn't get two evades, he dies because he has fuel leak. Right. So he has to get two evades. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, let her go. Are you sure? You ready? You ready? No, oh, he gets two oh evades. My God. <laughs> how? How? Uh, because it's Morgan. That's how. Ah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> I have to say, Morgan probably provides some of the most exciting dice rolls. That we see, <laughs> right? For the, the Vassal League. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I will say this, though. I'm pretty sure Poe does not live another turn after this next turn. Oh. I don't see how it's possible. Like, Vader is just going to screw him so uh, hard. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you then also turn Sabak around again? Well, I think you just use Sabak to block the too hard because he he almost has to take it too hard. Uh, he's got R four on him. Yeah, yeah. like because a yeah, one banks off the board, I okay. think, at least from this angle. I mean, yeah, probably, yeah. But Poe is occupying time for his other ships to get into position, so right. There is that. Who would have ever thought you just continually use? Poe as bait, and you just don't worry about it. Dangle him out there and let him go. 
I mean, I'll do that if I have BB-8, sure. Not with R4. <laughs> Carlo in chat says, uh, Morgan's Dice replying to Kevin. Challenge accepted. <laughs> That's awesome. A apparently he has no fear and he... <laughs> He trusts his green dice more than I trust mine. Right. Oh, Paul says this next turn is his favorite. So this. Oh, I bet. <laughs> well, I'm sure Vader's going to come in with a vengeance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Man, in in that Reapers and like, I just want to point out again that Reapers in such a good position to just screw with the A wings with Death Troopers. <laughs> yep. That was so well done by Paul. Like, keeping him there. Yeah, he put him on a rock and he lost the health, whatever. Yeah. But, God, he's going to be so annoying now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if you just... Really good. If you just slowly move forward, I mean, pretty much anywhere the those A-Wings go, you threaten that Death Troopers. And... and The only problem he has right now is that he's not stressed, so he has to kind of go fast because of ailerons. Yeah. But still, but, I uh, mean, you, you shift him from Tally to Lulo, which... Lulo's okay being stressed because you at least get the extra dice if you're not taking shots, but st stripping away the action, that's still, it hurts. Yeah. All right, let's see this. <laughs> like, we were supposed to have a key turn. Well, I mean, it was a key turn, it, like, two turns ago. Yeah. And then this turn I thought would be the key turn. <laughs> Maybe it will be this this turn. This this turn, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got a two turn out of the blue with the focus. That must be the ailerons. Yep. Yep. So does Morgan five forward with Lulu? Um. Man, even a five forward doesn't get away from Death Troopers. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, and he's jamming uh, Tally. Tally. Okay. So the way jam will work is the first token she gets falls off, mm -hmm. right? You only get to decide when they have tokens and you're giving them the jam. Yeah. Is, is he? I oh, uh, he's he's gonna yeah, he, block him off the board. Oh, I think he is. oh, uh, great move, Paul. Uh, that was a great move. Unless Poe just does like a three hard and is like eh. <laughs> three hard clench. Like, I mean, you're already clenching. Trust the dice because Morgan knows he can trust the dice. I mean, you can only trust green dice for so long. Uh, n another point here, like. BB-8 would be great on Poe with prime thrusters in this spot because you could you could roll in. So I just want to point out, how about instead of prime mm -hmm. thrusters, Vader just took a stress every time he took a target lock on Poe and he just wouldn't have taken a target lock on Poe. Maybe. Stupid prime thrusters. God. But yes, in this situation, it would be helpful. Okay, so Morgan didn't expect the Reaper to be there, so you, Lulu Lulu gets caught and doesn't get stress taken <laughs> off, so super feels bad, man. Yep. Okay. So does Tally... Yeah, barrel roll. Mm -hmm. Because he knows if he takes a focus or a target lock, it's just going to fall off because of jam. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. I don't know. So just watching how the game is played out so far, Jake. Yeah. I mean, tr I feel like Trick Shot really would have been good here. I think it would have fired off like three yeah. times. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I like Trick Shot. Uh, so he does two turn Poe, um, and he does get the block. And I think he's off the board. Uh, uh, uh. They're saying it didn't oh. flash red, which is usually wow. an indicator. So he's not dead? Well, yet. I don't know. They're talking, right? So they're going back and forth. Paul was asking if he was off. And Morgan said, well, it didn't flash red, but it looks off. And Paul says, yeah, I think it's because of the bump it didn't flash. Block kill. Uh, so Paul's off the... Okay. Yep, so... You know, it'd, it'd be really great if those two hard turns were, were blue, Jake. <laughs> and Morgan also says that's only the second time it's happened to him in six years. 
I mean, it happens. All right, so Tally is shooting. Yep. At Vader. Okay. One evade. No problem. Oh, I gotta give Vader a force point. Now we've got the blue shooting at Vader range three. Uh, hit crit. And Vader rolls a bunch of focuses, so he's safe. So, oh, no, no, no. Oh, he has a focus token. Yeah, he's Sorry. got a focus token. Gotcha. All right, yep. That's why I said he was safe. Yep. Okay, so just want to point out that the I-6 moving after is in a losing position. So Paul is playing well, considering he is the I-6 that has to move first. Yep. You mean you can actually move first and still do really well? You know, that's what I'm told. But I just get told that it's weighted clothing. <laughs> yeah, it's just getting practiced, right? That That's the big thing. And you you talk about that a lot, is that you just practice moving first and then most of the time it doesn't really matter yeah i mean it's a different mentality right i i found that i really enjoy setting the board state um mm -hmm. and maybe i'm just goku with my weighted clothing and when i'm ready i'm going to take all the heavy clothing off and just comes just crush everyone and if i start bidding yeah uh, even um paul saying in the chat how good a position that morgan has with all of his other ships and you know where he i guess he's saying he kind of feels out of position with his um yeah yep paul is correct morgan has his ships in a really good position because vermile is kind of out of the fight for a couple turns mm -hmm. morgan's closing in now on vader which i'm or sabak either one um yeah no he's he's correct he has made his situation good even though it's you know it's bad that he lost his ace yeah And it's important. People need to be able to be a good player. You need to be able to play without your your queen, more mm -hmm. or less. Like you need to still have a good game. Um, so we've got Spock moving there. Um, did a one forward with uh, ailerons, and then a one left turn. Yeah, I was gonna say focus boost. Okay, so yeah, Spock's getting shot at. And then I'm guessing we're going to see a five forward focus boost out of Lulu. Four forward. Four forward. Okay. And yeah, a, a, a very good, <laughs> good choice of the four. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Chad, I don't you're play right. Vassal. Yep. Five, five put him on the rock. So rotates backwards because, oh, yep. we, we missed a. Vermeil uh turned around there. Yep, did a two sloop. Yeah. Or a one sloop. And hmm. Is Vader he thinking about afterburners? Out. Yeah. Yep. And now he's going for a lock. Probably on Lulu, right? Um yeah, that's probably the the first ship you're going to encounter. Well, Def it's the next big threat, right? right? It's the next three dice yep. three dice gun that's going to be active. Well, maybe. I mean, I guess it depends on if Morgan is going to send the blue to help uh, punish Sabak or turn in this next turn to go, f you know, start putting pressure on Vader. I think the blue 4K is next turn. But yeah, I, I think Lulu's the <coughs> where the lock ends up. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah, he did go with Lulu. All right, so the rear shot at range two. Nice. <laughs> Three hits and a single evade. All right. Range two at so Sabak. So down to four. And Lulu or Tally onto Sabak. Mm -hmm. And he did not spend the focus there. 
So you mean the evade? No, no, no. I'm saying um, Tally didn't spend the focus because oh, he, he had sure. hit focus. Save the focus for defense. And then, yeah, Sabak spends the evade. Um, I updated Vader's force to two. Get uh, range two from for mile at Lulo, but uh, ability is not active. Only one, so this is dodgeable. Yep. Uh, more he did, yeah. Morgan rolled the evade. All right, so Sabak probably shoots four on three to strip the focus. Okay. Yeah, he's so shooting at the X wing. X wing takes a shield. Yep. Does not have to spend that focus. Range three back. Probably gets a damage in. More and more. Three hits. Getting two, two in on Sabak. So no more ability. Yep. Okay. Hmm. And Sabak is stressed, so there's no ailerons this turn. Mm -hmm. I would guess that Tally is going to do a three bank and just rotate arc. Like, go exactly where Sabak is right now. Take a focus and rotate arc. Yeah. And then... <clears throat> um, chat... You... Um... They're asking about Vader's force. Um, that's a, a different overlay. Oh, that's the stress from Poe. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, for whatever reason, Poe's stuff didn't go away. Well, I still really like the three bank from Tally, though. And if that's the case, I kind of like a 4K out of that blue. What's the slowest blue that the strikers have? Is it two? I think two? it's a one forward. Does he have a one? Yeah, they have a one through three forward, okay. and the one and two banks are blue as well. So, I mean, because you have to aileron, right? So, the 4K... Yeah, yeah. I don't think blocks the one bank aileron, so he would either have to bump into you on his actual move or he mm. would have to go past you, which is what you want, right? And then Tally will also be there to shoot as well. And then you present the blues gun in case Vader comes in onto Lulu. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And then Vader gets another force, right? He should be back to full. Um, chat, uh, Dutch, the Reaper is stressed, the Striker is not. That stress that's showing is from Poe. It just never got, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it never got removed. Okay, so I'm gonna put Vader's Force at three, because I think it's at three. It was at two after his recharge last turn, and okay. he didn't use it, so it should be at three now. Should be, yeah. Okay. So, 4K out of the blue. Hey! Oh, and it does block the one bank. Oh, well, whatever. Yep, Vermont clear stress. Yep. Block the aileron. Yep. Mm hmm. Takes the evade. Fear my rookie. <laughs> All and Morgan talking. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've seen what Morgan can do with that Blue Squadron expert. Yep. And then focus and boost, I assume. Yep. Yep. He's praying Vader doesn't one bank. Yeah, he sure is. Yeah. 
Well, and especially with the boost and not rotating your arc there, like if if Vader does do that, then Lulu's a sitting duck and no return shots either. Yep. So tally two banks. Target uh, lock. Target rotate. locks. Yep. Nope. Uh, right. Looks like Vader's bumping into Lulo there. Tried to too hard. Okay. And it was probably a good guess, considering Vader doesn't have the native boost, that yeah. he can't, like, correct if he goes too slow. So, interesting. Um. So, chat's asking, why not roll rotate on Tally? I'm guessing because I don't... I think Morgan thought Tally wouldn't fit the barrel roll, if I had to guess. Or he wanted a modified shot, yeah. All right, so... I think Vermile's going to have a shot. Otherwise, this is all Morgan. Yep. <clears throat> so here we've got Tally at Sabak, range two. Uh, Good thing he has a target lock. Oh, heroic. <laughs> 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 Whatever. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can't reroll the blank, right? Because heroic is a reroll. Because it is a reroll, yeah. Yeah. So uh, but one. he spent the target lock. He didn't he didn't use heroic. <laughs> I mean Oh, okay. It's the same thing, but yeah. <laughs> Effectively what Morgan did is use the target lock. Yep. So spend the evade, yep. take no damage. Yep. Okay, well he took the token away for the shot that matters. Mm-hmm. Here's a tough decision, too, though, because Lulu's going to get shot by Vermeil, and you don't want to give him his ability, so you might not want to spend focus here. Yeah. Uh, that's a tough decision. So... Oh, he spends it. He does? Yeah. Oh, he has health. Oh, and it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, he's got health. He might just take a shield or two from... Okay. I think I like that. Um, that's yeah, that's probably I mean, the right decision. Yeah, because Vermile shots what range three obstructed, um, so you'll get four dice. Yeah, instead of three. <laughs> Paul in the in the vassal log is saying that Lulo's killing everybody, and yeah, Lulo can do that. Lulo's amazing. Uh, yep. All right, so here comes the big 3v4 with mods. So. Four miles ability and focus makes it three. Yep. Oof. All right. E Get one evade and take two. Yep. It's still worth it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got rid of Sabak. That's. Yeah. There's only effectively two guns left, and one of them is at half health. Yep. And, I mean, I guess we should point out that at this point, um, Morgan's got 102 points to <clears throat> Paul's 93 Right. So in the turn before it was like eighty something to seventy three or something. Like right. That. Yeah. Just pointing yeah. it out, so because I mean it, it can influence what the guys are doing too. You know, mm -hmm. uh, knowing and keeping track of that score throughout the game um, is a, a useful skill and gives you insight as to you know at least the game state and what you should or could be doing. Yep. Now, if that block didn't happen against Vader, uh, I think this game is drastically mm -hmm. swinging back into Paul's favor. So, the blue squadron does a one left bank. Yep, sets up for Vader or Vermeil. Mm -hmm. I mean, what it, I guess maybe we should stop for a second and talk about what else... They they kind of went through the dials real quick on this one. Um, sure. Tally's um, turning in. Um, Lulo, do you just jump Vader probably. like with a two and then? So Vermile's gonna have ailerons, so he can go quite quite fast. I think you do like a three bank and kind of hide behind that rock and uh, take a focus. Paul, thanks for uh, coming and watching tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, have a good night. Night, Paul.
But yeah, I think you try to keep Lulu safe. Probably don't try to use his ability this turn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess if you wanted to, you could do a two bank focus boost, but me as a cautious player would three bank, take a focus and decide if I need to actually use his ability or not. But I would be cautious yeah. about it on this turn. Yeah, that's the one thing with Lulo is you don't have the the total health of the X Wing, even though if you're stressed you have the the same amount of dice. So you do have to weigh those options. Yep. Okay, we'll keep going here. Over mile aileron, one bank. Okay, so Lulu's very safe this turn. Yep. Could easily just two bank or two forward focus boost. Yep, two forwards. But do you do you need the boost there? Like just focus and I mean. No, you, you don't. Um, well, I mean, you want the third dice, right? That's yeah. What it's all about. But but it pushing that third dice probably, depending on where Vader ends up, could put you at range three instead of range two. Well, you've got to think because <clears throat> because Paul knows that that is a PS1 X-Wing. He knows that both Vader and Vermeil will get to shoot before he does. Mm -hmm. So you kind of anticipate Vader's going to jump in between Vermeil, I would guess. Yeah, that's what I'm just saying. Is as a reason not to boost with uh, Lulo there, because then you you're ended up farther away. Yeah. Just accept two dice, take a target lock. Right. Well, you already had the target lock on... Vader, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, two turn with Tally. Probably. Focus, <clears> rotate. Yeah, just focus and rotate. Yep. Probably doesn't get to shoot this turn, but. But sets you up good for next turn. Mm hmm. Oh, Vader bumps into. Vermont. Oh, no. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, what? He's got three force. Vader's probably okay. Yeah, but you wanted that target lock. Oh, for sure. Paul, oops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Vader range two, two and two. Yeah, I'd spend a force here. You got three. Yeah, and he does. Yep. It's okay, the Blue Squadron expert's not taking any damage this turn. Well, maybe. Now I maybe. Would, <laughs> I would I would maybe take one damage here. Yeah, he did. He he elected okay. to save the focus for the Vermile shot. Yep, I agree. Uh, he's taking the shot at Vermile. Okay. Hit crit. Seems good. Well, he's gonna at least take a crit. Yeah. Um, I would say Vermal probably just takes both. Yeah. Does he take both or just one? Um, looks like he's just taken one. I mean, he flipped the crit. Oh, uh, yeah. So he'll take both, right? Take both. Okay. Weapons so failure. Two health. Now, the weapons failure super matters. That's really going to take some of the pressure mm -hmm. off the X-Wing. Yep. So, Pally, no shot. Yep. yep. So, range two shot. Mm. Yuck. All right, here comes the expert. Probably with the kill shot. Oh, Paul in the in the vassal log is saying that he should have focused on defense before. He didn't re must not have realized, or maybe he forgot that he had the focus on for mile. I don't know. It's hard he to say. Oh uh, yeah, because he would have been alive maybe yep. depending on what the crit was. Right. The so Vermile dies. Yep. Uh oh, that expert. That blue squadron expert. He's in a really good place to 4K. 
Yeah, Vader's uh, in some trouble now. Vader is, yes. All right, so he'll get three force points because he goes back up one. Okay, well, um, let's see how this goes. I've got a good guess. Yep, there's the 4K out of the blue. Lulo turning in and locking. Um, rotate. Yeah. Yep. Just set up for next turn. Tally yeah, prob probably two turns up and yep. takes a focus or a target lock. Yep. Focus and boost. Ooh. Trying to block a hard turn. Like a three, probably. three hard. And what? He's still got a charge on afterburners, right? Yep. He still has a charge on afterburners. Yeah. So trying to block that, that three turn. Because his afterburner's three, four, or two. Anything three and above. Yeah. That's what I thought. And he does. Yep. He block. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, it's a no modifiers versus three, four, so he'll probably be okay here. Probably, but still, I mean, there's. You, you're putting uh, the dice in control and like yep. rolling those greens it, there is variance so alright so range one on Vader <laughs> oh ho, ho, ho! four hits uh, natties well Morgan's dice showed up again natties look at that uh, he spends a force to just take one shield oh uh, right. yeah <laughs> seems good and that's the only shot, so I'm going to give him his force point back. Yep. Wow. Still, though, that, that <laughs> blue squadron expert. Yep. Probably just one forward, take a target lock with that blue, and uh, mm -hmm. Tally just two forwards, takes a focus as and rotates. And Lulo two turns in, and what, uh, focus boost, probably? Probably. Oh, he won banked with the blue. Okay, so he's really trying to cover the kill on Lulu in case Vader goes for it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Probably take a target lock and rotate. Yep. Since she's safe. Yep. Yeah. Barrel roll and boost, huh? Okay. So did Vader take the one bank this turn? If he did, it'll kind of be sad, but it would be the right move. Mm-hmm. Um, looks like, uh, there's a block. Took the Man, three. Man, Morgan just putting on a clinic. Yeah, the the block clinic. All right. The <laughs> chat's saying that the rookie is headhunting the baddest man alive. <laughs> Dude, that rookie has done a lot of work in the last couple of games. Yeah. Which we've promoted him to expert. Yep. I'm going to change his name now. <laughs> Uh, it's squadron expert. Tally uh, range two shot on Vader uh, with target lock. All right. Does not two. need the target lock. Seems like good Morgan dice Ooh. again, so no shields left on Vader. Yep. And a range two shot from the expert. Oh. Do you spend two force Ooh, there? I spend two force, yep. So I'll just take one off because it'll be the end of the turn. Yep. Does, and All right, yeah, so he did spend both. So Vader's like free, at least now. Hmm. Oops. Jumped, That's all right. Jumped a little ahead, but the uh, the blue just uh, what one banked there. Yeah, I mean a lot of this seems pretty easy. Like yeah. probably just two forward with Lulu, take a target or take a focus and rotate arc backwards. Vader's probably gonna three hard afterburners, then figure out what he's gonna do. Three hard or Tally. three bank. Probably three hard, huh? I'm guessing three hard because then the three hard boost gets him out of the arcs of some ships. Yep. Um, Tally yeah. 
probably can't two turn. Uh, yeah, she's probably better off doing a three bank to the left and then taking like a focus and a boost. Yep, go the long yep. way around. Oh man, lock or shot. focus rotate. Rotate now so that way you don't have to worry about it next turn. Yep, and then just hide behind the rock where yep. you're you're safer. And yeah, there's the two forward uh, focus rotate out of Lulo. Yep. Three hard and then no, third. no, oh, no, that no. Talon that is roll? a talon roll, not a three hard. They have a talon roll now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. I mean, you've got that's two. Not Bad. You've got two fours. You just don't have your three dice from the lock. It's kind of the only downside. Right? Yeah. Oh, no, he has a target lock. He has a lock on Lulu. Oh, yep. Okay, so then that makes a lot of sense. I didn't realize he had the lock on Lulu. Yep. Yeah, I forgot about it as well. That's kind of scary for Lulu then. Two hits. Make one a crit. Spend the lock. Yep. But blanks in a blank. Uh, can he roll double paint? Nope. No. Taking a crit. Time to clench. All right. And All right, what's the crit? It is structural damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, it matters. It, it matters. does. The, the irony of the ability. Yep. <laughs> and Paul, Paul is saying, well, that's game. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Vader's got two force and three hull left. Yeah, but he's going to eat a range one shot and a three dice shot. <laughs> yeah. So here's the three from Lulo. Hit crit. And he has, hold on, he has a lock. Right, you know? spends the lock for a second hit. I feel like Vader's going to take some damage. Ooh, yeah. At least taking a crit there. Spends the force, yep. And the crit is disabled power regulator. Is that ion? Okay, yep, before yeah. you engage. Oh, okay, so that won't matter till next turn, but Right. Ugh. That's if ugh. right, if there's a next turn. Yeah, if there's a next turn. And only one force left on Vader. Yep. All right, here it comes. Here's the range one with target lock. Oh, there's... No oh, lock. that's a lot of paint. <laughs> now his, his dice are averaging out. But he's got the lock, right? And it's Morgan's oh, wait. dice. That's right. He cleared the maneuver last this turn, didn't he? Yeah. I thought he bumped. Oh, okay. Oof. Yeah, so he's got... Oh! All right. That's game. Good night, Vader. There's no way. Good night. No, right? Because... He... Well, even if he gets three paint, like it's un uh, it's unlikely. Then he's taking a crit. Yeah. Oh, uh, he uh, spends the one force point he has. And he <laughs> takes hit crit and dies. Just yeah. And that's yep. it. <laughs> yeah, Paul called it. Oof, duh. Good game. Ouch. A blue squadron expert, man. Um. Yeah. I I think the expert is gonna have to go to Ace. Blue Squadron Ace. Yes, I mean, he's getting promoted. He killed Vader. I, by like one more game uh, with Morgan playing the Blue Squadron this way, and we're gonna have to come up with a name for it, right? <laughs> it's gonna have to be a unique pilot. We're gonna have to like honor Blue Squadron. Yeah. Because Blair plays a bunch of blue B wings. I'm using a blue A wing now, and Morgan's using a blue X wing. Apparently, Blue Squadron is where it's at. Who would have known? Um, so good. Thoughts on the game? I mean, wow, Morgan, uh, his positional game, on point, on point once again. On point. Yep. Paul did good too, though, right? Like we can't forget. Yeah. Paul. Oh no, there was. Used... Yeah. Those that turn where Paul did Paul... Really good job. He used death trooper. Yep, death troopers where he turned both the reaper and the striker around, um, to to put them in a good position for, um, kill boxing Poe, like that was really good. Both. Yeah, Paul played well yep. with Vader, even with Poe moving after him. Like that, I don't think that really came into decisions Paul made. 
Mm -mm. And, I mean, part um, of that was that Poe was kind of in a bad spot when they finally engaged. So Poe really didn't yeah. have the option to do any repositioning or anything like that around Vader. So I think that's why we didn't see um, it really matter that much that Vader moved first. Yep. I, um, I, yeah, go I ahead. think it's also, so to point out, Tally did use her crack shot, but there were, there was no opportunity for Lulu to really use it. And beyond that one time, mm -hmm. neither, you know, Tally didn't have the opportunity to use it either right. or her ability again. So if we just counted, if I offhand remember, there would have been at least <laughs> three to four times that trick shot would have came into play. Yeah. So I know he's bidding five points, but I don't know, guys. I keep hearing Travis and everybody talk about bidding with Poe and... I don't believe you anymore. Sorry, guys. I just don't. I feel like the trick shot and the tools are just better. But I do like the the three dice gun um, in the list as well. So. Yeah. Well, and really, it's three three uh, three dice, right? <clears throat> For Morgan, because Lulu's of, effectively yeah. a three dice ship. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, what if all your ships were three dice ships, and some of them happen to be four dice ships? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ines, thanks for just uh, tuning in. Um, after tonight, uh, once the recording is all done and everything, uh, we will be uploading to YouTube. So um, I would say this game, definitely check out. Uh, it's a really good game with uh, Paul and Morgan. Yep, we haven't been disappointed by either of Paul's games or any of Morgan's games. Yep. So. All right. Um... That's all I've got. You got anything else? No, I, I don't think so. Um, maybe just a quick reminder, if you guys really appreciate what we're doing and you like the content that we're putting out, um, you can, if you're a Amazon Prime subscriber, um, you can subscribe to our channel using your Twitch Prime subscription every month. Um, it throws a couple bucks our way and it helps us out um, to be able to, to do what we're doing. Uh, Kevin, you're going to Crate Cup, right? The uh, beginning of March? Yep, I'm going to be at Crate Cup. Um, I'm going to be on the Scum and Villainy podcast on Thursday nice. because I'm part of their team. Uh, so I'll have some more there and I'll, I'll plug the show as well. And then we're going to record. I'm going to try to record games for the Invitational on Friday that I'll be playing in. And then I'm also going to try to record games on Saturday uh, when we run Crate Cup. Nice. I'll work with Chris to get that done. I won't be able to record any games on Sunday because I'll be flying out at like 11 something. Okay. So I won't have time to set up and record games for that one. And what is, is Sunday? Is that just the the second half of the Crate Cup day or what? No. So Chris is basically running a new format of like a, a Swiss kind of. So oh. like it, the idea is you just have to win all your games and the more games you win, once you get to like five, you get something special. Okay. But if you lose, you restart or whatever. Sure. Yeah, that'll be coming up real soon. And then we're going to go to Adepticon. It, Walker's coming too, right? It's all three of us? Yeah, yeah, we'll all three be there. Um, we, will be, we won't be live streaming from Adepticon. Um, we're going to let Dion handle that with uh, Gold Squadron. But we will be recording games. And then after the fact, um, we'll start using some actual live games instead of just Vassal games. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's it's always nice to actually have the real ships and all that stuff to be able to, to watch those games. I think they're, to me, they're more fun. But we've seen some really, really good games with Vassal. So. And a lot of these games wouldn't be able to happen just because of the uh, the distance that the players live from each other um, all over the world with the, the Aces League. Yep. So. yep. And it's good that, that they're doing it. Like, I, I think this at least, like Tyler talked about, helps us get some exposure. So no one really sees those games very much or they don't consume them as easily because they don't want to install Vassal and run it. So us going through these games is, yeah. is good. And, and I know we're doing a lot of Morgan's games, but... Yeah. <laughs> It's hard to argue with good play. Right, like, right. I, I want to see good games. Well, and, and, you know, I think we all learn more when we watch and dissect and analyze these good games and the top players playing these games because they're making good decisions. Um, it, it would be tough to, you know, watch a game um, with 
uh, maybe a lesser known player that isn't making the as good of decisions. And, you know, at that point, how do you, you know, it'd be tough to analyze and talk about it other than saying, yeah, that was a bad choice. So. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yep. All right. I think uh, that's about it. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, really great game. Thank you to both players for getting this one in as well. Have a good night, everybody. Echo Base out.